cost $3.8 million. And one kilometer of asphalt road cost $2.8 million. But because concrete roads will last for 40 years, it is prudent for government to opt for concrete roads. Today you sit before this committee alluding to the fact that a kilometer of asphalt road costs 1.5 million Ghana cities. Which of the two is accurate? It's a bit confusing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I should not be taken out of context. Perhaps I should uh, throw more light on road construction. As a principle, as a principle, perhaps one area that, to a very large extent, one can, one can talk about uniformity in pricing is in the area of asphalt concrete because it is an overlay. And even there, the, the 1.5 I gave is the minimum because it depends upon the thickness of the uh, overlay. So you, you may get different level of thickness of asphalt overlay because you have to take into consideration where the overlay is being applied, the vehicular movement, the vehicular population there, is it a, 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 a busy area? Which type of trucks are going to use the area uh, road? You are talking about uh, concrete roads, and you even mentioned three point uh, uh, something million. Asphalt concrete roads could cost as much as the range, depending upon the road condition, in terms of city, between 7.2 to 8.4 million Ghana cities. The same uh, as far as concrete road. No, and as I said, I, I have the table here. But ordinary, in residential areas, particularly in areas that does not have a, a, a number of uh, thoroughfare rooms, you know, uh, uh, coup ends, that you don't get vehicles you know, uh, uh, passing through. The thickness of the asphalt you know, is very minimal, and it will reduce the cost. So when we talk about costing of uh, roads, you don't take it you know, uh, at its face value, because one kilometer of road, even if it's for surface dressing, could be five times or ten times more than the same length of road elsewhere because of the ground conditions. That determines the cost of the road. So in road construction, you can say that a kilometer of road being brought to uh, uh, surface dressing level, bituminous level, is, let me use tentative figures for the sake of argument, one million. So if you hear that the same kilometer of road somewhere is three, four million, is outrageous. It's not, because at that second uh, uh, place, the conditions might be different. You know, there might be bridges, the, 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 the ground soil might not be the right, well, it has to be taken off, you know, covers, and so it depends upon the ground co conditions. 
So don't take it that the cost I said it costs 1.5 every uh, asphalt kilometer goes uh, uh, down about on the average. You know, because it's just an overlay, simple overlay, you know, it could cause that. But depending upon the area, it, it could be hard. That's the point of our mission. Before the MP, honorable nominee, here. Before the MPP came into power in 2017, the NDC had already awarded road contracts, and the contractors were at the various stages of construction. I have uh, the volleyball bridge in mind. I have the Ward K Town Road in Tamale in mind. I have the Tordon Town Road in mind. I have the Mercedan Boyum Road in mind. The MPP wrote formally to these contractors to stop work. Four years down the line, nothing has been heard. And this is common throughout the country. What are you going to do if you are giving the nod in terms of all these roads that have contracts and are still lying idle? Thank you. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, so far as my memory serves me and goes, it was only in the area of Coco Roads that some projects were halted for review of the contracts and decision to repackage some of them and to uh, manage the uh, road sector very well. I'm sure it became very necessary because if you may recall, there were a lot of contracts awarded between June and December 2016 under what was termed at that time as enhanced projects. In fact, a number of them, uh, as I was informed, because it was being handled by Coco Board, the procurement processes had even not been completed, and they had to halt them to review uh, them. At the end of the exercise, a number of them were, were resumed uh, and contractors were asked to go back and work. Others were repackaged and re-awarded. As we speak now, so far as I am concerned, majority, if not all, if not all, and perhaps it may not be all, but majority of them, you know, work resumed and are uh, going on. With Bolivar Bridge, it's a different uh, facility. You know, uh, it's being done through JICA, through a Japanese facility. The facility is available, it's ready, and uh, Honorable Abrapa is here. You know, um, it is in his constituency, and it's one project that he has been following on closely with me. You know, the facility is there, but we needed to do the approaches because if you don't do the approaches and build all the roads, that facility will at the end be a white elephant. So, Jaika and the Japanese government was insisting that that should be done by the government of Ghana, and they have made money available for the bridge itself. 
Fortunately, I am happy that that amount has been uh, obtained now and uh, uh, great development, uh, African Development Bank you know, is uh, financing that project. And within this first quarter, when if I am eventually approved, is one of the projects that you see light of day within this first quarter. And Honorable Abrapa knows it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick follow-up before my last question. Still on those roads that have been abandoned, you did not mention Mercedan Boyan Road. It was awarded and work has started in earnest and a letter was written to the contractor to stop work. It is one of those roads that the government never go back to the contractor to either tell him to go on or off. And for your information, that has been a den for armed robbers. Just last week, a young man was shot three times on that road because of its deplorable nature. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a very uh, important information. If eventually I am approved, I promise that I will work closely with the Honorable Member to resolve this issue. I thank you. Chama, which issue we wanted for the report? I can't pronounce those town names, but the minister, she can repeat it. Okay, Chama wants to do it, that we get Mr. Mr. Chairman, the uh, Chama do wrote the for the honor, report. Honorable member uh, is talking about. Mr. Dan Boyan, is that right? Does it start from Osui? Osui, Mr. Dan Boyan. Yeah. <laughs> Minister, what will you do about Mercedes Way Road, as I heard from Chairman and the Honorable Ejari? Thank you. All right. So then, my love, as the technical advisor to the President on roads, how are you going to ensure that government commits good amounts of money to the road sector to ensure? that our deplorable roads are fixed, especially those of the rural communities where we get both our cash and food crops, like Sechiman Law. I thank you, uh, uh, Chairman. Government prioritizes road construction. There is no doubt about that. And it's the first time in the history of this country that a government has declared a particular year as year of rule. It tells you, obviously, the importance government attaches to it. And it is only the president has even a, a, a gave at his uh, latest State of the Nation address declared 2021 as year of rule. So, Mr. Chairman, I want to assure this uh, committee that, and the nation that government is going to work on roads because roads are important in the scheme of uh, transportation. Because if you take all forms of transportation, the road network constitutes almost 95 to 98 percent. You know, uh, so it's important, and the economic development of this country revolves around roads. Roads can open up the country and continue to serve as the pivot, you know, around which all the good things around this country revolve. So government will continue to invest in road infrastructure, and this government and the president have already amply demonstrated that. That's why in the past four years, there has been so much work in the road sector, even though we still have to do more. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable nominee, um, we are very much aware about the Tutulega 
Sandemba Wiesi Road, which was awarded on contract as far back as May 2016. In fact, I've had occasion to ask you questions in respect of this very subject in the House, and you will give us very refreshing answers that um, the contractor was going to continue with works and uh, finish on schedule. Originally, when the contract was awarded, works were supposed to complete by February 2019. But as we speak, I mean, we have not done up to half, 50% of um, works. Mm -hmm. My point is what has accounted for the delay in the completion of the Tuchuluga Sandema Wesi rule. It has great economic potential. Wesi valleys, Fumbisi valleys where rice cultivation takes place is affected likely because of the bad nature of this road. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's true. Uh, in Upper East region, there are two main, very important roads there. I'm not by any way suggesting that other roads are not important. Any road anywhere is important, but in terms of uh, prioritization. And one is this San Dimar Road, which, as you said, leads to Fumbizi because of the potential uh, uh, agricultural uh, expectation from that valley. As I speak with you now, even though there has been some delay, because we had to re-engineer that road. We had to do some re packaging. There is a contractor working on it now. Uh, in my, my turn, uh, it's your area, so you know it, working on that road. We have to speed up and to award other uh, stretches of the road up to Fumbizi. And it may interest you to know that during this second term of President Okufado's government, the agri ministry is being challenged to develop the Fumbizi potential in terms of agriculture. I have already started discussion with my colleague, the former minister and the minister uh, uh, designate for agriculture, the Honorable Dr. Akuto, to draw a program to ensure that the road from Sandima up to Fumbize Valley you know, is well developed to promote the expected work to be done in the Fumbize area. And the Ministry of Agriculture is bringing in special equipment and machinery for rice production. So I can assure you that we are going to speed up work there. The other important road in the region, you know, was the Boga Boko Pomacro Road, so covering a distance of 109 uh, kilometers, and it has also been, you know, a part one particular road that touches the heart of uh, Honorable Ayaiza. And any time he speaks to me on that road, and of he, he is so appreciative of the work being done let's, by government. Let's put money into it and do it for them, please. Yes, your next question. Yes. Honorable nominee, um, there have been several complaints from some road contractors with regards to delayed payments relative to certificates raised for that purpose. Now, some of them 
have actually lamented that it appears that the mode of payment, selection for payment, is in a way discriminatory. I would come to that. Now I have looked at your handing over notes closely. Um, I don't know which of the documents is this, but the one I have on page 11. Handing over notes, Ministry of Roads and Highways, Volume 4, Ghana Road Fund Secretariat, November 2020, at page 11. Now I see a table numbered 5.3, Outstanding Indebtedness. If you look at the table, the total outstanding indebtedness as of September 2020 is 3,134,107,797.81 pesos. Out of this figure, payments amounting to the tune of 826,752,674.84 pesos was made, even though the total amount of claims, actual outstanding payment requests, was in the region of 1,826,752,674.84 604.55 pesos. So, point is, what criteria did you use to effect the payments to this tune, leaving the outstanding balance I have um, alluded to? I have said that for the past three years, they have forwarded certificates for payments which remains outstanding. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have already indicated in my earlier submission about uh, payment. And I will not sit down here and say that payment in the rural sector interrupt for other areas had been the best. Even though government from East you know, uh, dwindled and legal resources you know, uh, had done the best for the rural sector. For the past three to four years, government cumulatively had paid contractors to the to the tune of almost 10 billion, and the figures are there, the statistics are there. There are still outstanding amounts to be paid. We take the road fund, and road fund continues to have challenges. From 2017, this government has not had the full use of that fund. And you and I know, and everybody knows, because this, this fund was mortgaged as far back as October, November 2016 for a loan from UBA Bank at an interest rate of 32%. So the fund has not been wholly available to government, even though a lot of things had happened. For instance, we had to even refinance that loan because the amount that was taken was 1.3 billion, the entire annual accrual into the fund. We had to refinance it to Fidelity Bank and GB, uh, GCB Bank, like Transformation Bank, 
and we were able to bring the interest rate from 32% to 21% with 12 months moratorium. So we have been having these challenges and we are not out of the uh, rules yet. So we find money to pay contractors, we will continue to pay contractors and I believe that going forward, work in this area will be much, much uh, easier. And let me also say that perhaps in preparing the, the uh, handing over notes, you know, all the certificates there had to be captured. It does not necessarily mean that all of them you know, uh, uh, are attracting interest because it's contractual that payment should be paid within 90 days. So that amount, because the handy governments had to be at the close of the year, even if a certificate came in the last day, it will be captured. But it does not mean that government is paying interest on the entire outstanding amount. But one thing is true, and I am the first person to admit it, because I work with the contractors of this country, even though government has been doing its best. Government appreciates that more has to be done. And going forward, I know there are plans, which I can't share here, but there are plans, and the president is determined, and I know what I'm talking about, to so apply like all this within the shortest possible time. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, then I will, is it Give me Emmanuel Abdullah, which one's there? Any of them? Any of them? All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to quickly draw the attention of the nominee that the communication from His Excellency the President and the rendition of his name as he provides on his CV, the Honorable Kwesi Amwako Atta, you don't seem to have my attention. Your, 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 your Atta, is it with an H or without an H? The President communicates to us with, without an H, you have an H at the end. Which one is correct for our records, the accuracy of our records? Thank you, Honorable uh, Chair. Mine ends with H, so it's correct. Okay, I, I hope the presidency will take notes. Just very quickly, the $55 million looming judgment debt, the Honorable Minister responsible for national security appeared before us last week on the 10th. And when I posed this question to him about the looming judgment debt, at the time, we had not received a notice uh, from the International uh, Arbitration uh, Court. Now we know that the Chinese company is suing Ghana for what they call wrongful termination. And we'll be paying, if they succeed, $55 million. The National Security Minister told us that the Accra Intelligent Traffic Management Project was already being carried out by his ministry, and there was no need for your ministry to initiate that uh, contract uh, in 2018 and sign with this, uh, 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 sign a fresh contract with this uh, Chinese company called Beijing Everyway Traffic and Lighting. Technical Company Limited. Uh, is that an assertion you stand by? Do, do you confirm what the National Security Minister told the committee? Honorable, are you, are you asking him to confirm what the uh, Minister of Energy told? Yes, I want to know if that is the accurate account, the true position, particular situation. Honorable Minister, are you able to confirm or deny? What happened at this committee? 
I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's true that notice of arbitration has been issued and my ministry has been served. And because of that, Mr. Chairman, if you permit me, since that legal step has been taken, I am stopped and I do not want to comment on it until, you know, the petitioners, you know, go through and the matter is determined. But I will perhaps add that when my colleague, Honorable Minister for National Security, appeared, he made mention of an existing project, which is an alpha project. It was true, except that the alpha project was a specific project that dealt with CCTV cameras. And, you know, that project started from the previous administration and the concentration was in Accra, Kumasi, and the two airports. So, if you like, I wouldn't say he was wrong, but he presented a skewed picture because he concentrated on cameras. But the Accra Intelligent Traffic Management Project is not only for the CCTV cameras. It's a project that had dual objective, to improve transport infrastructure and to ease congestion. That's all that I'll say for now. And I wouldn't want to go into the merits, the merits, the details, you know, because of the fact that it is in my knowledge that notice of arbitration has been duly issued and duly served on, on my ministry. At the right time, the Attorney General of Ghana, if eventually it's approved, you know, uh, will obviously be seized with the past and that has been being the government chief legal advisor as per uh, Article 88 of 1902 Constitution will be the appropriate authority to deal with the matter. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, just indulge me one more. My understanding as the Honorable Blackwell is seeking to know from you I appreciate that you don't want to go into detail, but our understanding is that in Parliament, your ministry, as supervising ministry for roads and highways, came to Parliament for a parliamentary resolution to get this contract supervised by your ministry with a dedicated Chinese entity. Now, you also have the Minister for National Security come to Parliament seeking to set aside what you had done with a different Chinese entity seeking to do that work, which is what is occasioning the judgment there. So, which ministry is supervising this, or will supervise this, given the current uh, information available to us as Parliament? Thank you, Chairman. And Chairman better so who terminated the contract? Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, as I have already indicated, these are all part of the reasons that gave the petitioners the course of action, and they have taken that action. I, like I said, <laughs> I am a stop, and, and I, I, I prefer that I don't comment on it now, and let the, the legal processes you know 
taken by the petitioners uh, uh, be carried out. Mr. Chairman, my second question. Last month, specifically on the 14th of January 2021, the Ghana Chamber of Construction Industry issued a statement in which they assert that your ministry owes them 1.8 billion Ghana cities in debt and that after listening to the president at the inauguration declaring a second year of roads, they are doubtful that that will be successful if you do not pay them this sum of 1.8 billion Ghana cities. Is this figure accurate and what are your plans in redeeming this uh, quite a staggering amount of 1.8 billion Ghana cities to the Ghana Chamber of Construction Industry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have indicated a number of times that, yes, government owes contractors. The figure cannot be wrong. And His Excellency, the President, is not unaware of indebtedness towards contractors who work for this country. And the year of roads will mean using the same contractors to work. So government is determined to make all these outstanding just good within the shortest possible time in order to empower contractors to work. And uh, a number of contractors have done a lot of work. They have done yeoman's uh, job. This country, you know, salutes uh, them. And government is working hard and will continue to work hard, you know, to pay all these uh, outstandings so that we will be in a position to empower them, to use them, you know, as we go ahead. So the declaration of 2021 as year of growth will require that we, we use the same contractors to work, and government is determined to do that. And there are plans towards the payment of all the outstanding debts. Thank you. So finally, by way of follow-up, we have discussed earlier the financing arrangement for all of these abandoned road projects, outstanding commitments, and all of that. I hold a different view, with all due respect, that it will appear that your ministry spreads itself thin and that you start so many projects at the same time. And that is why we always have these constraints. That it, it, it seems as though you succumb to the political pressure. Yes, I know the CDB Afro Barometer, for example, the round eight they released recently, uh, reveals that majority of Ghanaians, the number one issue is roads, infrastructure, how to get it fixed. And it appears the politicians are just succumbing to pressure. You award contracts even when you are not sure of a dedicated funding source. And so you have all of these projects littered all over the country without any guarantee that it will be completed in time. Don't you think that it is time to adapt a different paradigm, finish projects that you start before you move on to start new ones or initiate new projects, regardless of the political pressure? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's a very, very, very important uh, point. It has always been the policy of government and my ministry to relate all projects to be executed to a dedicated funding source. Because the two must not be a mismatch, otherwise you will create a problem. But at times in awarding contracts, the expectation is there. You know where the, the, the funding is going to come from. 
particularly if it's a DOJ project, as we are talking about. The contracts are awarded, and something which was not in contemplation at the time of the award happened. No. Unforeseen circumstances. And the classic example is the COVID pandemic. And we are politicians, we are members of parliament, you know, and we are honest people. Whether MPP, NDC, CPP, whichever government has been in power, it affected the national pace so significantly. So it throws all government expenditure overboard because of reduced revenue. That's why we have started some of this. Thank you, Honorable Minister. So I will, I will ask that even as far back as September, October last year, if you come to my ministry, a letter was issued to all my regional directors and engineers, chief director, everybody. From last year, we have ported a world of new contracts. Unless it's absolutely necessary and unless it's an emergency. And, and uh, unless it's an emergency, you know, so that we will be, we will be able to deal, deal with outstanding payments. And as we go forward this year, you know, we are going to follow it up and pay more of the outstanding before we start a world of new uh, contracts. And I believe, uh, Honorable Chair, Mr. Chairman, I believe that with this, and I'm happy it's coming from uh, Honorable uh, Kujatro and Dropa, all of us must take it in good faith so that as members of parliament, if you approve me and your projects your projects are Thank not, you, Honorable are Minister. We'll come, come to you on the side. Yes, Honorable <laughs> Dwayne. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, quick follow up. Can the Honorable Nominee assure uh, this committee, like the National Security Minister did, that the company involved in this traffic management thing did no work and so are not entitled? any payment. So the people of Ghana must be rest assured. Honorable, I beg you. That is a matter that will be determined by the tribunal. He, uh, if it were the court of Ghana, I would say he will be, uh, what is the word he used? He may be in contempt for as he speaks, go ahead. So let that matter be determined by the court, please. No. Chairman, I agree with your ruling, but just if I were to clarify what Honorable Suyuni means, when the Minister for National Security appeared, he was told that some invoice had been pre prepared for work done by the contractor under the Ministry of Road. I'm sure my colleague is just seeking to know, to confirm whether work was actually done under his ministry. Honorable Leader, if I knew at the time what I know now, that the matter is before it, I mean, I would have disallowed that person. So, I didn't know then. Aha. Very well. So, please, let's leave that one. I'm guided. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Leader, thank you. Um, my colleague, Honorable Oblaka, made reference to the uh, situation that he thinks is as a result of uh, your ministry spreading itself thin. I have been going through these spreading itself thin when it comes to engaging in uh, road construction. I've been going through this very um, good work done by the Auditor General, uh, performance audit report of the Auditor General on selected roadworks in Ghana. So one is on uh, Eastern, East Legon, Spintex Road underpass, then the Eastern Corridor Road Project, Lots 5 and 6, and then the Oil and Gas Enclave Road. I see, for example, on page 88, uh, table of summary of projects, uh, East Legon Spintex Road Tunnel Project. Uh, the contract sum 
was uh, supposed to be 14 million uh, 815,261.46 Ghana cities. The final cost, however, turned out to be 28 million 125,502. That's the East Lagon Spintex Road Canal project. Then there is also the one on the Tatakashi Madina Road project. Now, a contract that was supposed to uh, have lasted uh, 30 months took 147 months to complete. The initial contract sum, 23,558,960,000, was, I mean, at the state ended up paying on 30th June 2019, 170,477,493. From 23 million, by the time we ended the construction, we paid 170,000. Now, Honorable Minister, when you started, you spoke about how contractors are paid based on first come, first set, depending on when their IPCs are submitted. Just at that time, I got text messages from contractors. Awakon, AS, Pebu, and Tascalia, indicating that their certificates have been with your ministry since 2015. And we all know how many contractors have complained about works that have not been paid for. Honorable nominee, generally, we know that some of these people may have been affected by whatever process and procedures that you use. Now, interest and delayed payments, as I have indicated in these reports, and sometimes inadequate road designs, have been seen to be a big drain on our resources, perhaps making it impossible for us to even do more roads as we require. So it may not just be about spreading ourselves thin, it may not just be about lack of resources, it is just because we spend so much paying interest on delayed payments, which leads to high costs of doing roads in this country. You have been Minister of Roads for the last three years. Now, what reasons, I mean for the last four years, what reasons will you assign for these delays, that leads to this interest payment that are a drain on our economy. And what have you done in the last four years to improve the situation? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the observation by the honorable colleague is up is correct in that it's not in the interest of the nation to delay payment because of the the huge interest of poor that coming as much as the situation may be unavoidable. We must try as much as possible to reduce it. And one reason for doing that is what I have already said a short while ago, that perhaps all of us, and particularly the ministry, will have to be extra, extra prudent in a world of contract so that we always relate it to funding source and we i'm saying we should be extra prudent in the sense that there could be unforeseen eventualities so if we base the award on the expectation of funding 
expectation of government revenue and anything happens that we have suffered in recent uh, uh, months or years, last year, it creates a problem. So I agree with you that we are taking a second look uh, uh, of that because it's not healthy you know, when contractors, payments, delay and attract uh, more interest. The contractors themselves are not happy and they are not fond of the interest. No. Every contractor... So those are the, the systems yes, you have put yes, in place in the yes, last four years to yes, improve the situation yes, is my the question. Contractor, every contractor prefers that he is paid on schedule, he is paid on time. So that, that can we help us. us. What we are, we are can, we, can you listen please? Can you help us? The question he's asking is, systems you put in place, it's about cash flow. Do you have control over cash flow for paying for your um, contractors? Chairman, that's why I have laid a foundation saying that we don't have control over the cash flow. Anytime we are on contract, we do it on sound basis. But something happens and and, and, and we are not able to meet the target. That's what we say that we have learned from it. That's why we are now going gingerly in a world of contract, so that we avoid uh, uh, delay payments and we avoid interest payments. That's the only choice. Thank you. Yes, and I will say. All right. Um, Honorable nominee, the Bimbla Salaga Road. The Balku, the uh, Balga Boku Road, the Salaga Man Kango Road, the Tamale Nantong Karga Road, the Third Ring Road in Tamale uh, that passed through Kambli Four and Taha, were all roads that were on contract before you assumed office as minister in 2017. Did you renegotiate these roads? And can you give this committee, I mean, can you kindly uh, let this committee know the contract sums then and the contract sums now and the state of these roads as we speak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, just uh, some of these ropes, like you said, were uh, on, on contract, particularly Boga, Boko, Pomaklo Road, you know, was being undertaken by uh, Quares, Lavau, there were problems. At that time, work was not going on. The Kango Road and, and all work had stopped, you know, uh, all that time. We had made great efforts to get contracted back on this road, you know. And if you take the uh, Boga Boko from Akro Road, for instance, you know, covering a distance of 109 or so kilometers, you know, I believe all being well by the end of second quarter this year, that road will be fully completed and then uh, uh, commission. What we have gone very far is about, uh, if my memory serves me right, is about 90, is about almost 90, 95 percent complete. You know, particularly the Volga Boku one is substantially done. You know, substantially done. They are now working on uh, Boku from a pro road and work is going on and the contractor on that road, you know, uh, Corey Zavaro is an efficient contractor. So it's going on and all this. So uh, we have done some uh, uh, negotiation with them, you know, so that they come back on 
the rules, about four rules the rules we've mentioned. These are critical rules, you know, that uh, work will go on. I cannot just on top of my head, you know, give you figures about the what it was or what it is now. But all that I can say is that these rules, you know, almost constitute part of the critical rules, the, the critical rules that we have. And this second term, the government will make sure, and, and uh, the present second year of rules, all of these are going to see. So, uh, Minister, you are chairman, with that, your assurance, Nanton, Kaga, Bushogu, and the rules mentioned by Honorable Suyin, what are your plans to get those rules completed? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we shall follow them up closely, uh, do proper supervision, uh, bring it to the attention of government to make sure that we get the appropriate funding to finish these rules. And we are going to work in earnest. In fact, we've been with greater speed, you know, uh, this second year of President Akufuado to facelift all rules in our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Honorable Mogni. Uh, my first question is uh, I have to just, <laughs> just ask your question. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Mogni, I'll take you to Salaga. See, you've been there before. I was there when you came. And I'm sure you will agree with me, if not totally, that Salaga remains, if not the only, then maybe one of the few district capitals without tired rules accessing it from all ends, from Bimbila, from Tamale, Makango, Kafaba, and from uh, Sanga. None of the roads leading into Salaga as a municipal capital is tied. The whole town, and indeed its indigents, are engulfed in dust throughout the year. And so I'm wondering, it's true that um, in August 2019, the Sangai Salaga Strait, the Bimbila Salaga Strait were awarded on contract and work has started. But that leaves Makango, Kafava, and Tamale leading into Salaga. I don't know what the plans are to make sure that at least these roads are also done so the people of Salaga and the Salaga, entire Salaga South constituency can have some comfort. Tied to that is, um, I don't know if you've been to the claw area of the Salaga South constituency. We normally call it Abromasi. Abromasi uh, happens to be the main town so when we say Abromasi, we want to assume that we're talking about the whole of Klaw. It's the same issue. You turn off from number one, from Prime to Yeji, to go to Abromasi, and that's it. You can't see, in fact, the road is non-existent. It's just somewhere to pass, you know. And the people of that place are Ghanaians, uh, Mr. Nomni, and they pay taxes. There's a lot of uh, farming activities going on there. They need to cut their goods after they've harvested. And so, please, if in the event that uh, you, you get the nod, are we going to pay attention to this area so that the people there can also feel, feel part of Ghana? You know? Yes, Honorable Minister, we do pay attention to the area the Chief mentioned on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, that is the reason why His Excellency, the President, in his own wisdom, you know, uh, has nominated me, if eventually approved, to do. And the Ministry 
is there to do just that. I want to assure that if I am given the nod, we will continue to be in this house together. Let's work together. And I don't know, perhaps you might have had a tip off somewhere before asking this question, because this important uh, camp, Sarada, Bimbira, and Lakanku, they have already been captured in our uh, database to work on their even uh, internal groups. You know, they are important towns. So if you have not had any knowledge, any information about it, or if you have even had, I want to confirm, I want to confirm that this vet uh, uh, that giving the nod, these are priority rules that their uh, internal rules you know, uh, are being uh, worked on. We have taken inventories already of these internal uh, rules and uh, we are working on them. And they will see light at the end. Chairman, yes. So, what of the Salaga Township Road? I was there recently for the funeral of uh, Agia Fatija, the former member of Council of State. Just entering the town, as she said, Salaga Street, uh, the historical market, and other. The township. Yes. That is internal, Mr. Chairman. I'm talking about internal rules. And, and even if all these district capitals, all the capital, we have arrangement for them. And even in uh, the manifesto of uh, uh, the new patriotic party, our determination, you know, and it's stated in there to build, you know, all internal rules of uh, district capitals. And I can assure you that these are uh, important rules that are already receiving attention. Yes, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My second question is to do with urban roads. In your medium term expenditure framework, you indicated as 2019 to 2020, you indicated that you've done periodic road maintenance of about 22% for urban road network versus your own projections. You did only 22%. Please, what accounts for this performance? And then what would be the plan to ensure that uh, if you get the nod, you could do more? Tied to that is, why is it that when we construct roads, we don't construct pavements in order to protect pedestrians, people who want to walk, that people, sometimes people want to walk and there's nowhere, they are struggling with vehicles to use the, the, the road. Is there any reason why we don't construct pavements in this country? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to Say that road construction should always take into consideration provision of uh, walkways so, because the safety aspects of road construction must be taken seriously and should not be compromised at all. And that's why in certain situations even we incorporate provision of foot bridges particularly in town centers and where people uh, cross the road. But there again, we have a big, big problem. In this country, you construct roads with walkways. You come the following day and hawkers have taken it over people sell on walkways and we are unable to enforce compliance. And the enforcement 
unfortunately and regrettably, is not with my ministry. And we see it all over in our country. And I believe something has to be done. All right, thank you. Yes, Honorable Gisela. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Senior nominee, I have pictures of your constituency today, the Tiwa West District slash constituency. You have very nice roads. In fact, I see road equipment, I see a roller, and other things on it. That means that work is actively ongoing in your place. And I pray that I also have this luck in my constituency, I will see in our West. Very soon, in this 2021 year of rule. My question is that's by the way, but I mean it. Yes. My question is do you have a conscious system of alternate routes? Alternate routes. Bearing in mind that quite a few of the highways, I take the Trans West Africa Highway, for example, there are times when there's a lot of traffic build up. Do you have a system? Do the ministry have a system of alternate routes so that people have a bypass or something where another alternative to, to, to pass instead of having to spend long hours in traffic, burning fuel, polluting the environment, and just causing themselves stress and anxiety? Thank you. Yes, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Road construction is an ongoing process. And roads undergo constant redesigning and re engineering. And as population increases, as vehicular, that is in terms of human beings, and as vehicular population also increases congestion starts developing and road engineers and planners always you know, think of uh, uh, building new roads, building alternative roads, construction of uh, flyovers and interchanges and dual carriages uh, as a result of uh, urbanization and as a result of uh, growth in population. So the plans are there. For instance, I have been privy to the road plan for Accra, Massey, and even Takrave and Tamale to some extent. Tamale is, is reasonable. No, because it's an emerging city. And I am only hoping that the city authorities in Tamale will not go the way Kumase and Accra and Takrade have done. They have the opportunity now. And Tamale was said to be the fastest growing city in uh, West Africa. I stand to be correct about that was the impression. It's growing very fast, but the land space is there. It has not been corrupted as we have in Accra and you know Kumasi uh, and Takrade. There are a, a lot of roads in Accra that with increasing vehicular population, human population. I don't know. We, we have to be interested in your plan for alternatives. We we Let's have to we yes. We, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman with, with your permission and the highest respect, if we are starting... We told ourselves not to spend more than 12. Okay. We are now thank being you, clear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. But they are not COVID on a very important note, and I believe I should take the opportunity to address it. The encroachment of uh, road corridor and road reservation, so that the question you raised, very important question. You, you want to do uh, 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 dualization and you can't do it because of 
encroachment. You want to bring alternative routes to ease congestion. You can't do it. So we have the plans. If I have to answer your question directly, we have the plans, but we are limited you know, uh, by the kind of encroachment that we have in our country. And government will have to spend millions, if not billions, you know, on compensation before you know, things can be done. Yes, the last one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Incidentally, there are serial migrants who anticipate that a road construction is going to happen. And so they get compensation from one side, and then they migrate to another part when they know that another compensation will be coming along the way. So just for advice that even if there's encroachment, something has to be done. Because at some point, the citizens can just not bear the amount of traffic that they have to find themselves in. So that is your mandate that you have to see to. My last question is, in 2017, you said that 39% of the roads were rated as good, 32% were fair, 29% were poor. Can you give us the current percentages after four years in office? Because you are seeking to resume that same office. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, that exercise is going on at the end of uh, this term because it's important for our own statistics. You know, the number of roads the government was able to impact, you know, for the uh, last four years. Uh, we are building the statistics now. You know, uh, that is why I, I was able to... I know, so the statistic is not immediately available. Well, After 2017, we don't have the new yes, but, road condition mix. Yes, but Mr. Chairman, something is being done. That's yes, I agree. Done. You have and said it's done. That's not ready. Let's move on. Understand. Yes, thank you. Yes. Mr. So Chairman, this is the basic way of assessing him. What yes, is it? Yes, he says it's been done. Uh, the rest is explanation. But he's answered your question. Yes, Chief. Sorry. Well, whether he will be mindful to provide you to the House or to this committee after he reaches. Yes. Yes, Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Chairman, bear with me. Just a couple of questions. The first one is constituency, my constituency specific. When I'm nominee, um, the Insan Kumase Highway um, is between twenty towns. Lancer and Efutu. And if you check the population, the last population census, the voting population, is near over 100,000. Um, there have been a number of accidents on that highway and school pupils who have to cross from one side of the road to the other. I know you have enabled or facilitated the construction of a number of foot bridges in Greater Accra and other parts of the country. Uh, Honorable Minister, I want to hear your assuring words to the people of Insalma Beji if there are plans or consideration. I need to ask this question because I recall in previous parliament I asked ministers who had said that they had issued a bill variation order to that contract for the footbridge to be constructed. I want to find out if you have thought about this or you will think about it, plans for the people of Efutu and Lanter. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, that road is being worked on. Uh, if you take the entire road from Ofanko, Ofanko to Kwafuku, there is a contractor on it currently. Because it's already dualized, but the road has failed, and we are building it you know, uh, into a three lane uh, road. And then from Kwafu Chrome to Africa Junction, China Water is also on it uh, working. And there are about three or four interchanges, you know, not even just ordinary uh, uh, foot bridges between uh, Ofanko and Kwafu Chrome. 
to where we have to do in between food break, spread upon the distances of the proposed interchanges to improve the safety of pedestrians is going to be done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Nomini, you, you are noted to have innovatively engaged uh, the fiscally challenged in your ministry uh, to engage in a number of activities which has been very turned out to be productive. I don't know if this is the case. Uh, are there any lessons going forward you intend to continue or you want to do some variation to this initiative? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the physically challenged population in our country is quite significant. Uh, Ghana Statistical Service puts it around 3%. I mean, if you read their uh, document, I got to know it because I work with the disabled in our tables. But Ministry of Health puts it at 7%. You know, uh, and there, there are differences there. I mean, for Ministry of Health, uh, they look at them perhaps in a broader uh, uh, perspective. The statistical uh, 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 service looks at perhaps the, for want of a better word, you know, seriously, physically challenged people. But otherwise, the disparity and, and, and the differential is quite wide. But uh, whatever it is, we have uh, close to one million or so uh, of our brothers and sisters, our children who are disabled. But they must also earn a living like all of us, and they are entitled to it. That is why the government uh, under President Akufuado made it uh, possible for them to be employed in the Togo, because the, the services and the work there sees their physical condition. And as at now, we are close to 50% you know, of the disabled people working there. It's regrettable and it's unfortunate that some of them are not being treated uh, well for whatever reason. And my ministry is, 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 is working on that work. That cannot be tolerated when I have the privilege to be the minister. It can't be tolerated. And we are even determined to push the percentage forward. And I believe that going forward, we should be able to move from 50% to uh, whatever, whether 70 or 80. You know, and I will be happy to see one day that that door is reserved for disabled, if possible, 100%. Honorable Nomini, you're noted of roads declared by the President again. Impressive. Um, we, we cannot understand the devastating effects of COVID globally, and Ghana is not left out. I can appreciate how we have related with our development partners. In the wake of the COVID, and also recognizing the fact that the government may not be able to bear the entire cost of road construction, how are we positioning ourselves, especially with your ministry in wake, to be able to, to plow in the critical support that we need from our development partners to be able to execute on this vision of year of roads? Mr. Chairman, obviously it's not going to be an easy task 
but taking into consideration the important of roles in the socioeconomic government of the country, a way must be found out. Uh, I believe government is going to intensify its revenue drive, and that we, on our part in the ministry, will tackle critical roles and will do some prioritization you know, to ensure that uh, the road infrastructure does not suffer you know, uh, generally. And it's also important that supervision will have to be intensified. Supervision, because quality work is all about supervision. So that if the, if the little money that we have, 10 kilometers of roads are well constructed to last their expected design life. Because every road has its uh, expected duration. You know, five years to 10 years, 10 years to 15 years for, for uh, asphalt overlays without any problem. And then um, almost 40, 40, 40, 50 years for concrete roads. So if we do proper road construction and they last their expected uh, uh, design life, it will free us to do more roads. So where we have problems with money, we should ensure quality roads. And I can assure the people of this country that my ministry will not tolerate any contractor, or for that matter, anybody who is working uh, in the ministry, you know, to hand over you know, any shoddy work to this country without getting the value for money. So we are going to do that. Mr. Chairman, this will be my last uh, honorable nominee. Um, you appreciate how congestion has become a challenge. Are you able to relate to this committee how you have dealt with congestion over the years and your plans in the years ahead of us? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I perhaps would have to repeat what I said earlier on. Congestion is a key and major bottleneck in the road infrastructure. And it must be dealt with almost uh, uh, on a daily basis. It's an ongoing thing. That is why roads have to undergo constant designing, redesigning, engineering, re-engineering, and so on. That's why we build interchanges to ensure even distribution of vehicular movements, you know, so that wherever a, a road is congested, then uh, we come in with you know, uh, long viaducts and, and so on, you know, to ensure that uh, we get proper and fair distribution of uh, vehicles to ease congestion and traffic. We will continue to collaborate with the city authorities and the, and the planners of our cities to ensure that uh, the road sector is much, much improved to make life comfortable for all of us. Thank you. Um, I Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'm mindful of the medical team advice not to keep too long. So I hope my colleague, uh, Nomi, will try and give us short answers so I can move quickly. Mr. Chairman, I want to find out from the nominee the Accra Tema motorway expansion project. He started the competitive process from 2017 to 2020. 
using a PPP arrangement to select a contractor. Am I right? Yes, the, the target PPP agreement. The chairman, and we procured through the help of the World Bank, Russian International as a transaction advisor. Am I right? Yeah, please, yeah, through the mic. Yeah. And you also did the marketing summary, pre qualification, all those at Alisa. Yes. No, these are all, all mandatory processes of uh, PPP uh, arrangement. After doing all this, did you complete the PPP arrangement or it was cancelled? It was completed because it was out, out of that process that uh, a, a, a contractor was was. Uh, Finally appointed Mumbotaranger. Uh, I just wanted to be sure whether the PPP arrangement was concluded or it was terminated along the line. It was concluded for us to get a competent contractor. When we started the, the process, 24 companies put in bids. 24. And we went through all the uh, processes. Uh, and uh, uh, it came to pre-qualification of four contractors, then it eventually reduced to two, and we did the, the technical evaluation and financing evaluation, and eventually selected one of the two, which is uh, Motor Angel. So Motor Angel uh, won the bid to do. Was it the motor engine? Was it procured through this uh, PPP arrangement or through source sources? Motor engine, Mr. Chairman, was selected as, if you like, the uh, the winner. I mean, uh, I don't want to say uh, the uh, most competent, of us, but the winner. No. It's just like uh, going to school and five people or ten people in the class, you know, examination, somebody can come first by obtaining you know, 95 percent. I'm using 23 percent, it's 95 percent. And he will come first. Somebody will get 94 percent and come second. So all of them are brilliant. All of them are clever, all of them are the competent academically, but at least by just one mark difference, somebody is first. So, Mortar Angel emerged, you know, because uh, in all the technical evaluation, all the financing evaluation, you know, that went on with uh, competent. Uh, 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 committees and technical they won't. No. So I want to find out from the, no, uh, the, the uh, nominee that the scope under the PPP arrangement were, what were the scope in the PPP arrangement, what was the scope of the, 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 the project? Well, we followed the PPP uh, arrangement, as you said, there was market uh, sounding, and then we had the pre-qualification process. And then uh, after that, the four that were shortlisted and pre-qualified you know, brought in their proposals. And the processes went through the, I mean, the two evaluation uh, processes before we selected the contractor. But when you select the contractor, that is not the end of it. After that, you have to go into negotiation with the contractor. So we went into uh, that negotiation with the contractor, and we are still working with the contractor. Uh, the it's, not, it's, not, it's not fully uh, ended. The chairman, the PPP arrangement was for design, contract, finance, maintain, 
operate and transfer after 32 years. Am I right? No, I mean, what you are saying is not specifically, uh, not, not, not uh, and, entirely so. We, we are not, we, we, we are not uh, uh, separating the, the processes from the PPP arrangement. The PPP arrangement went on as specified, you know, by, by uh, uh, these uh, rules. You know, we went through the entire process, and that is I was just asking the scope in the PPP arrangement. As you may be aware, Minister, when you have a project, before you call for bids, you decide what you want, what your expectations are. Oh, yes. I'm saying that in this yes. Accra Timor motorway, in the PPP arrangement, which the transaction advisor was rotting international, it was to get someone who could find the finance, who could build, who could operate, who could maintain, and then transfer to us in 32 years. And I just wanted to be sure, is that right? Mr. Chairman, that has not changed. If we talk about the scope of projects, it has not changed. No, I was only asking whether that right. was what was yeah. the no, arrangement. It's not changed. The scope is not changed. And let me even throw a little light on it. The project name is uh, the Motorway Project. But you mentioned scope of work, and it's important, it's relevant, because you need to establish the, the scope before you can do pre-feasibility and do feasibility. That was the one I was just asking you, whether yes. that was what you set out to do. Yes, no. Yes, I think I, I have answered in the affirmative that yes, but I am... Okay, thinking. so if that is so, I because am, of time. But for the benefit of... Yes, it's a very important issue. Uh, I hope Mr. Chairman will oblige us with little time. I want and of your information. We will get time to discuss your business. For now, just answer the question simply so we can move on quickly. Please. Yes or no? Move on. But you said leave your floor. Yes, yeah, so Minister, you said yes. Am I, am I right? I said the scope has not been. That's what Mr. Chairman, it's the highest respect. He has mentioned of scope. If I don't briefly tell what the scope is, you know, it will not be understood. But I was saying that the project name is motorway project. So immediately somebody will think that we are only going to build the 19.5 kilometer motorway. This one. It could be related even to the cost. But it's only a project name. That's what I want to put on record. Because it goes up to Tetepashi interchange to be remodeled at Pankwa Bridge to be remodeled and to uh, Neoplan. So it's, it's originally it was within the 31.5 uh, kilometer stretch of road. And the bid value in the PPP arrangement was $480 million, am I right? That project is, uh, is estimated to cost, by some things, to cost about $570 million. I'm talking about the PPP arrangement that was being advised by Rotin International. The bid figure was 480 million US dollars. Am I right? So I I know that what we settled on for the, to be the cost of the project was 570 million dollars. So are you saying, telling this committee that when the PPP arrangement started, the bid figure was not 480 million dollars? I just want that for a fact. Yeah, I'm giving the the the, the contract sum, and that's what we are working uh, with. Did the transaction advisor advise that you retain two of the bidders up to negotiation? And did you do that? Transaction advisor can advise the client, the employer, but it can give uh, different advices and the employer will decide what it, 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 it wants. Now, Mr. Chairman, I'm just referring the nominee to a press release that he issued on January 15, 2021. And, Mr. Chairman, 
page 2, uh, same paragraph 2. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I read. During the negotiation with the contractor, it emerged that the financial arrangement proposed by the contractor were not favorable to government, hence the need to restructure the project as a design and build contract. Is it right? Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's right. And you also said in paragraph 3, in the 3, paragraph 3, because of the sound technical design proposal, a decision was taken to retain the same contractor. Consequently, the Minister of Rules and Highways, through the Ghana Highway Authority, rescoped the project and invited Motor Angels to submit a sole bid proposal in line with the relevant clauses of the procurement law. Is it right? Yes. So you realize that the PPP arrangement that you started was not what you used in procuring the motor engine? No, Mr. Chairman, that's what I want to explain that at this point is normal uh, uh, procurement uh, process. We wanted the contractor you know, to do the job on, on PPP arrangement. But during the negotiation, after the project had been selected, during the negotiation, we were realizing that the viability gap you know, was, was, was quite wide. And that would not be in the interest of the country. And if government had to come in to support the, the project, then after completion, the, the contractor would have used the project for, I think, almost close to 30 years, because under the PPP arrangement, it is, it's going to be a toll road. You know. So once we wanted certain uh, percentage of money you know, for the road, we were not getting the employer, and for that matter, government of Ghana, thinking in the interest of this country, has every right to to think of different source of funding to do the same project. Okay. But the uh, contractor is efficient. He, he has proven it. He has the, the the technical capability to do it. So, so, Mr. Mr. so now you understand why I was yes, asking you that the procurement no. of motor engines currently was not based on the public the public-private partnership that was started. And that's what I, Mr. Chairman, that's what I keep saying that we, we, we should not try to differentiate uh, uh, that from the design and build uh, uh, entirely because that process is, you know, gave us a competent contractor. I'm not the funding that. model and the execution model that would be in the interest of our country. Honorable Minister, I'm not disputing that, but what I'm saying is that you set out to not to finance anything. You wanted companies that would come, finance this project, operate it, maintain it, be able to recoup their investment in 32 years, hand it over back to us. The 32 years, and then hand it over back to us. Then along the line, for whatever reason, you noticed that the negotiation was not going to be in favor of government. So you did the right thing to make sure you protect the interests of the citizens. But you now chose to use a sole sourcing using the same contractor that was part of the bidding. And I'm asking that, why did you do that? Sole sourcing there is, that's why, that's why I want you to appreciate the fact that we have gone through a very competitive tedious process to get the most competent uh, uh, contractor to do, do the job. So we take advantage of the contractor. 
because we want to change the the uh, funding so because we want our country to get the maximum advantage of it so it's going to be a design and build project now so bring your proposal so they brought in their proposal and it wasn't even at the level of the ministry it had to be sent to ppa you know and even from the ppa it, it followed up to the central review committee so it was subjected to you know critical review and support and the process has even not uh, ended as at so now. The, so, the, the, the challenge is this yes you know you had a transaction advisor who was advising you on a ppp who advised up to a concluded point that we couldn't proceed because of this interest that you were trying to procure, which was the right thing. And then you then chose to continue with one of them, which is the motor angle in this instance, to do a sole sourcing. And I'm saying that if you look at our procurement laws, and maybe Mr. Chairman, let me just refer the nominee, because you in your letter said you have followed all the procurement, all the laws of our country. If you look at the procurement act, Mr. Chairman, Chair of Commission, section 40, single source procurement. A procurement entity may engage a single source procurement under section 41 with the approval of the board. Where, that's A, where goods, works, or services are only available from a particular supplier or contractor, or if a particular supplier or contractor has exclusive rights in respect of the goods, works, or services and a reasonable alternative or substitute does not exist. What was so unique about motor angels that now that you are going to look for the money to construct these roads, you still wanted to use them as the sole contractor in this exercise. Mr. Chairman, I know what you read from from uh, the, the Procurement uh, Act. Mr. Chairman, let me remind uh, ourselves that, and uh, I believe you know that, but I'm, I'm only uh, uh, making reference to it. So sourcing, despite the fact that it's generally discouraged because Social sourcing normally denies the, the employer, if you like, uh, two things. It denies you the opportunity to select the best competent person. And then, at times, it denies you, you know, the opportunity to get value for money. That is why the position of the Procurement Act is that at all times every project, every uh, uh, service you know, to, to be competed for to be on competitive basis except A, B, C, D under certain clauses. And there are about four or five courses. Yes, so that's what I'm asking. What was special about multi angels? Yes, if my memory serves me right. So, technically, sole sourcing is not illegal. Obviously. Provided you do it within the framework of the law. And that's what I'm just asking. Yes. And what necessitated yeah. the use of multi angels for sole sourcing when it could have been competitive because now you are going to look for the money. It's not like the previous time when it was PPP, where you've gone through all the tender process, people who are bringing their money. Now that you are going to look for the money, why did you choose to use sole source? What was unique about the multi angel that you have to select them at the expense of maybe local contractors, other contractors? What was unique? You, you, you read a paragraph which started, you, you have it for which started like because of the of the 
because of the technical competence of because of the proven technical competence of the uh, contractor or something. You are talking about the paragraph three that I read. I think the last paragraph. That was that was your your words when the, you said yes, the, because of the sound technical the, design to yes, that. Yes, and you don't you? forget that no, this no, uh, was not something which was being done exclusively by the road ministry. This is a recommendation by the technical group, majority of who were not even from my ministry. You know, there's a technical group from Ministry of Finance and a technical group that did this work. I'm not disputing that, but that's not part of the condition you know, for ex exclusive no, rights for the recommendation, talking. for the recommendation to government. And let me also, Mr. Chairman, draw an attention to that. These are all negotiations. And once we want to change, we have gone through a PPP process, gotten a competent, proven competent contractor. Is it not advantageous to the country, you know, uh, as far as that project is concerned, to work with uh, him? And if things are agreed, and processes are agreed, you know, we should not forget that it will go back to cabinet for cabinet approval and end up in parliament you know, to uh, end it. So it's not a process that is ending with my ministry. And let me also put it on record. And I say this, I say this on, on, on authority that this project of Cost, project cost of almost 570 million uh, United States dollars. And the complexities of that project, as we stand now, no Ghanaian contractor has the capacity to undertake this project. If the person. No contractor. If, if, the, Ghana, if, if the person is to come. With his money, I agree with you. But if you are sourcing for the money, are you saying that no Ghanaian company or group of companies can be put together to do this when we are looking for the money? Is that what you are saying? Mr. Chairman, if you, with the highest respect, if you listen to me well, I say no Ghanaian contractor has the capacity to do this job. No Kenyan contractor. Now, has the, I, I just want to get this clear. Has the capacity Your statement to do this job? I, mean, I just want to understand you. That you are saying that where we are finding this money, as a sovereign country, we are going to procure 570 million. When we put our contractors, we cannot get them to be able to do this job unless a foreign company. Is that what you are saying? Where they are going to look for the money themselves, I will agree with you. But where we are providing the money, are we saying that there's no local contractor or group of contractors that we can put together to be able to do this work? Is that what you're saying for a fact? But, Mr. Chairman, it's not stated anywhere in this document that Ghana is providing the money. Where is it stated in the document? Where is it stated in the document that Ghana is providing the money? Uh, so that is where, with the highest respect, you are getting it wrong. Why is it stated in the document that the government is providing the money? The government is not providing the money. Mr. Uh, Chairman, that was why I, pick, I, I took the nominee step after step. The reason why we have to abrogate the PPP was that they wanted Ghana government to contribute to the finances. And to preside, they wanted us to contribute 80% no, of the finances. No, no, not and sorry. you, let me, let me finish so that you can answer. So that then the minister said, if as a country we wanted a PPP arrangement, you are coming in board and you want us to contribute to the finances, then we rather cancel and finance and look for the money, whether through loan or through other means, so that you can now do the work. Is that not what has led to the cancellation of the PPP? Mr. Chairman, not necessarily so. And Mr. Chairman, 
we should also not lose sight of the fact that this is not the first of its kind. We are, we are privileged to be members of this house. We have approved many uh, uh, loans in this house you know, all these years, from the days of NDC, MPP, NDC, MPP, as, as we, we get opportunity to do every eight years, you know, until now. And if you take all loan agreements, that come for our discussion and approval from the uh, 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 finance uh, uh, committee. Most of them, there are always uh, uh, Ghana government counterpart funding. So if they are doing the project and, uh, 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 with a foreign company and there is government counterpart, uh, uh, counterpart funding, you know, <laughs> It's normal. We have been. Let, let, let me just ask to end, no. maybe probably this matter. Is Mortar Angel going to arrange for the financing for this project? We haven't uh, 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 settled on that, but if they Is, come. Then let me ask this again. Is the Ghana government going to arrange for the funding it's, of this it's, project? It's not Ghana government. If if uh, Mota Angel is not able to bring the funding and any company, it could be even a Ghanaian company, can arrange foreign funding for the project and, 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 and uh, can work with Mota Angel to provide the technical uh, uh, I, I, I advise. So, be, so we are in the process. So, Mr. Chairman, I will not believe this. The most important thing is that if the company is not financing the project, as you said, you have not settled on that. Ghana government, as of now, is not the one to settle on it. But you've gone ahead to sign the contract. Is that right? On 16th, on 16th of December 2020. You, you've signed the contract. Is government, that right? government is is uh, 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 in a, a position to say that having gone through these processes, what is being recommended by the technical committee to government? No, don't forget, government hasn't taken the decision yet. This is at the uh, technical level. My uh, minister, you have signed a contract on the 16th of December 2020. Is that right? We are talking about commercial, look at the contract. Well, commercial contract yes. was signed. Commercial contract is, is different from the final contract to execute the project. If, if you in don't, the sign, the final. If in you the, don't sign a commercial contract, if you don't sign a commercial contract, how can, what would be the basis for the company even to go ahead to give you the detailed design. What would be the basis? No company working so will go ahead, invest in uh, 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 a design technical, you technical designing if it's not holding uh, uh, Please, I just want, uh, honorable uh, nominee, I just want to find out which of them, them comes first. Is it a commercial contract Cabinet and Parliament. Which one comes first? Because you don't have, from your own your statement, you are yet to go to seek Cabinet approval. You are yet to seek parliamentary approval. But you've gone ahead to sign a commercial contract. Which one comes first? Oh, Cabinet first, and then it, and then it will come to Parliament. It will come, uh, 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 whatever comes to Parliament. Well, let me just would have passed let, me, through, let me just move on. So, would have passed through, uh, but this contract you have signed, the commercial contract you've signed, is for design and build. Am I right? It's for design and build. Yes, it will enable the uh, company to go ahead to do its detailed. The financing is not yet settled, based on right. the answer you gave earlier, right? The okay. financing, as to who is going to finance, is not yet settled. Uh, is that right? from your answer earlier. It means that we are not certain on who is going to finance it. Is that right? Mr. Chairman, that is why I 
have said that we have not come to the end of I'm not disputing I'm not disputing that yes. I want to ask a question that the final says my special so the final says the process, process is ongoing Mr. Chairman why didn't you add maintenance to it as it was in the PPP arrangement it's a good suggestion but that's what I'm saying that it's a process so if you make such a suggestion to be taken into consideration and it will influence uh, 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 the eventual contract to be to be so me, why, why has also or let me ask you before uh, the road length in this design and build the same as when you were talking in the PPP arrangement is it the same the road length the yeah. length, the length, the road length in this build and, yeah. desi and um, uh, design yeah. and build by motor and the no, is yeah. it the same as as it was during the PPP arrangement? No, it's not. Which one is longer? Is it? Is which one is bigger? Is it the one now is bigger or the one in the original PPP arrangement is bigger? The original original uh, one was uh, bigger than that yeah. one was. Uh, the original length was, I think, 30... If you can't even remember, I just wanted to... It's now 27 or something, and that will be explained. No, it's, it's because originally it was to start from from Ashaman roundabout. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? Ashaman roundabout to link up with the ongoing... Uh, Motor uh, uh, run, run about. You know that was a, a, a grant facility from. So it means that the original was longer or yes. bigger. So I just, oh, that's all I wanted to find. Yes, yes. If, and I'm uh, trying to explain it to you why it it is now about uh, three point something kilometers uh, short because okay. because that has been added to the dualization of. The roundabout to Akosombo, which is being undertaken by a company called Inza. So it's only fair okay. that once they have taken that, we we'll reduce we'll that reduce the, road, the, 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 the road length. Yeah, the road length. So why has the big figure, the big cost, changed from 480 million dollars to 570 million dollars? I, I don't have the figures here but but that the fact that the length is reduced if we talk about scope of project it's not only the length i found the length could even be an infinitesimal aspect of it you could reduce the length and uh, increase certain aspects for instance i'm not disputing that but i don't have I don't, you have, don't have the figure. I don't have the details. So yeah, are you assuming that, that in the it. current of a build and a, what do you call it, the design and build, the scope is bigger than the original one? Is that what you are saying? That account for the increase in value from 480 million dollars to 570 million dollars. Is that the reason? Yes, that is the the, the proposal now. But I cannot put the figure out because I'm saying that the process has not closed. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. The process has not Have you been. done due diligence on motor uh, engines? You know there was this incident in Malawi, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the Malawi port, the, what do you call it, the Lake Malawi port issue that they were involved. Have you done some background check to be sure of their ability to be able to deliver? Have you done that? Yeah, so far as we are uh, concerned, there is nothing legally uh, wrong with dealing with that company. How soon do you hope that this agreement will come to Parliament? Uh, it depends upon uh, the, the the speed with which uh, we, we work. Now, we know uh, it will take perhaps some few weeks, depending upon even what all of us work. Cabinet is not in place now. You know, if cabinet were to be in place, maybe by the end of the second part of this yes, year. Yes, because if if any document goes to cabinet, it takes 
it takes a maximum of two weeks, at least from my working experience. At times, even one week, depending upon the task, because it goes to the cabinet subcommittee, and if it's uh, looked at and referred to the plenary session of cabinet, you know, it's either approved or rejected. That's what we experience. Okay. Now, Mr. Samuel, let's move away from the uh, motorway. Let's move away from the motorway, so that we just do this manual manual as an end. Yeah, in an answer to an earlier question about this uh, 500, the 500 million plan in the budget of 2018 on paragraph 184 on the agri route, you, the answer you gave, how much of this money has been spent? You couldn't give a specific figure. Do you need time to be able to provide that information? Yes, we uh... are. So that I can make the request to chair that you provide that information to us. Yes. Okay. Also, earlier when you were answering about the cost of about the, the cost of the asphalt per kilometer. The cost of asphalt overlay, you you use one point five million. Okay, it, could, it, could, it could cost us depending upon the talking about average, yeah. I know. And it could be more expensive, you know. But you're using uh, average figures. You're using an average. Well, I, 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 I say it could, it, I, I have given the minimum amount. And it, 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 it but do you remember it, it that, in, twice that do you remember amount. that in the Sino Hydro Agreement that came to Parliament, the average cost for this same uh, overlay was about $1.2 million. Do you remember that? You brought it to Parliament. <laughs> I have provided the answer, Mr. Chairman. I said that I said that the cost per kilometer of asphalt overlay is 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 not such a thing. We agree. We are talking about averages, Minister. We understand that. Yes, it depends upon what you are doing. But the vice president, in the a speech that was said in the light uh, lighthouse chapel, used. 2.8 million US dollars. Yes, and it could be correct. You know. And then yes. the current construction that you are doing from Hoboy to Itoji, seven kilometers, and it's costing us 111 million cities. If you take the average there, it's over 15 million. Mr. Chairman, I, I, these are things that. Uh, I, I, I have not preview up. I don't know where it's come from. I haven't done the studies. It has not been. Uh, That's why we are asking this. It's because we ourselves, as politicians, we keep accusing each other of unnecessarily inflating. When you were in opposition, you used it extensively that this was like virtually rip, uh, stealing from the taxpayers. Today, you have a situation like this. That's why. We have to all be very careful because, like I agree with you, yes. if you are going to construct an asphalt overlay in, say, a more clay area yes. and a more stony area, yes, exactly. the cost will never, yes. can never be the same. Be the and we we'll always use these averages to yes. virtually yes. make fun of each other. And I think that as road minister, you should take advantage to let us put a stop to this. Exactly. The, 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 the location and the requirement of the, exactly. the, the soil type will determine that. So, Honorable Chief Webb, a commentary is enough. You and I know what we do as politicians. Are you asking questions? I leave your commentary out, please. Okay. Okay. Just a follow-up. Honorable, Honorable. Mr. Chair, uh, with respect, um, nominee, are you able to distinguish the asphalt overlay and asphalt Honorable after him, I'll come to you. So well, no, to just a follow-up on him, and I don't have any uh, questions. After that, you will you do the follow-up, so we save time. No, no, I don't intend to. I just wanted the clarification on yours, and that's it. I'm just doing a follow-up. I won't ask questions. Mr. Chairman, in an answer to an earlier question, the nominee said that payments for certificates are done on first come, first served. Did I hear you say that? 
in an answer to an earlier question, you said that certificates by road contractors are paid on first come, first serve. Did I hear you say that? Oh, okay, generally as a principle. Speak into your mic for the rest of please. Generally as a principle, yes, but we, but we cannot uh, follow that all the time because there are always circumstances, different peculiarities, different things, and so it, it depends. And I can give you one classic example. Somewhere 2018, latter part of 2018, we had to complete six foot bridges on the Adenta road. The, the construction was ongoing, but because of the knockdown of uh, one or two people, there was agitation and something. So you, you have to jump the queue to be able to get that. Yeah. Something like that. Understand that. We had to, to engage you know, six different contractors and even to pay them up front to complete to the, the full bridges because we have to respond to the social needs of the people. This is a, because and that so, earlier when you answered, this didn't come so, out. That was what I was coming yeah, about. Yeah. So I understand you. So, but is it is it abnormal for someone to have a certificate there for the past four years not paid? Is that is that normal? Depends, and it will be uh, look at case to case basis. There must be a reason, you know, why something is is happening. But otherwise, I can tell you, uh, uh, payment we have to be fair to everybody. You see, all these issues come up for one simple reason. I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, assuming uh, assuming the resources were there and everybody is paid, everybody who will complain. But in a situation where you don't have the resources to pay uh, everybody at the same time, and in a situation where we have critical roads to construct. So you have to you know, manage the payment in such a way that you get work done. Provided in all uh, you, you hope that that you, is done with you some do it fairly and with good conscience. And we That's do it right. with Minister. good conscience and fairly. And the records are there for anybody who cares. And, and I okay, I'm not going to blame. If you travel between Bauliche traffic light and the uh, American House traffic light, you see that the asphalt overlay was done very recently. I mean, I tried that road a lot, probably less than eight months. And you always say, asphalt overlay are already developing portholes. You go from Ashalbotre, being the highway, towards Lakeside Estate, and you see an asphalt overlay that have been done towards the school junction, and they are all developing four potholes. And I'm sure there are so many examples around, dotted around, where asphalt that we all know may keep long are all developing potholes. Don't you think the time has come for us in our design? We don't just do design and build, but design, build, and maintain. And if I know I'm going to maintain it for a number of years, maybe. I'll be forced to do that. Don't you think that it's time for us to maybe start looking at it that way? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You are right. Uh, asphalt overlay can crumble, can fold, can break. Can break is true because in 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 doing the overlay. You know, the contractor has to be very careful and has to be professional. Because asphalt overlay, for instance, must be laid hot at a certain temperature. You get the temperature wrong and it can have effect. Two, and perhaps more important and fundamental, asphalt overlay is, 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 is an overlay. The, the base must be strong. If your base is not strong and you lay it within a short time, you will have 
problems. So, so Ernest, are, in those instances where they have not so ensured this, I am what are that. you doing? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am, I am coming to that. Because that is what we call shoddy work, which should not be tolerated by anybody. You know, because if the, the, the base is wrong and you have not stabilized the base, you shouldn't put the over it. And if you're a contractor and you do that, now in my ministry, you will go back to redo it. So no, we should by those of us who apply this group that I mentioned should expect those contractors to, yes. to come back to fix No, you will go back and contractors have been. So we expect them to go back to do it. Contractors have been uh, directed to go back and do it. I won't sit down here to make mention okay. of the contractors. I will me the Afenya, the whole, the, 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 the Winya road towards the Eastern Corridor. In May 2020, you were in this house and you said the contractor is on site. Are you aware the contractor is not on site and the congestion on that road, the mm -hmm. last two weeks we were heading towards a downfall workshop, is so terrible. Is there something that you hope could be done to get the contractor to be on site? Thank you for the information. Yes, we know the traffic congestion on that stretch. Uh, of the road, uh, all be well, it will come to an end very soon. Because of the, 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 of the fiscal, the this was fiscal challenge that you've been engaged. You know, you set the target of 50 percent. The persons with disability on the tow boots that you set the target of 50 percent. Are you aware now it's back to our 30 percent because the private contractors that you engage. I don't know whether in the agreement with them, this 50% is not stated in it because they are laying, you know, they are, which you yourself admitted that sometimes they are not treating them well. Yeah, I, I, I ordered an investigation uh, into that and I have the report. And so the PWD should be rest assured yes, that you have, take it up and, and ensure that this will be done. I have the numbers and I have those, uh, the list of those who are working there now. And I don't compromise on it. An incident happened a year ago. You know, the manager in charge of tow boots, and we have about 36 of them across the country, in connection with disabled, I can tell you, and I can say it on authority, the, the manager about uh, one and a half years ago, who was in charge of the tow booth with Ministry of uh, uh, with, uh, Ghana Highway Authority, you know, uh, joked with this policy. And I, I can tell you, he was removed. Because the, 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 the people the of this country who are uh, fiscally challenged also have to leave like all of us. Mr. Chairman, my last question. The last question is, Mr. Minister, we all know that we have to maintain, rehabilitate existing roads. We also need to build new roads, bridges, and what have you. What, and we don't lack engineers, capacity in engineers and contractors. What all of us agree is a major challenge is funding source. What innovative which I would introduce in this, if given the opportunity for a second time, to enhance the funding of major roads. Will you consider, for example, PPP, BOT, power trunk road, where you are not going to be financing it, but they will do it and then take to, to be able to recover it. What either, with any other innovative method to be able to finance and get a lot of roads Done in our country. Yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. One of the surest ways is what you have suggested yourself. You know, uh, uh, this all these uh, arrangements you know, uh, are feasible. You know. But the most important thing is that 
when you walk that route, it means that the, the potential investor will have to throw the loan. But at the moment, Ghana pays the lowest rate in the whole world. Ghana, we pay the lowest rate in the whole world. So if you want to go... They say rate, rate in what? Yes, toll, toll rate. Oh, okay, the toll rate. If you want to go uh, BOT, BO, BO, uh, OOT, or whatever, rate, as you see in other parts of the world, the research that has been done in my ministry on the average toll rate is around a dollar. And Ghana, a dollar is close to six cities. But here, people pay 50 pesos for uh, uh, toll rate. And if I am giving the approval, is one of the things I'm going to do immediately. I just have to go to cabinet first, proposal of increasing the toll rate and it will come to this uh, honorable house. And I believe all of you, everybody here will support it. And Kenyans will also accept it because it's like the father of the egg and the chicken. Which one should come first? Are people prepared to pay more to get good roads or they should get good roads before they pay? Because I remember the last time I can't Say that, that the last time toll rates were were toll rates were increased. I think it was during the time of uh, NDC. There was so much hue and cry in this country, from raising from 50 pesos to one city. We also know uh, what happened in Ghana. Drivers were saying they will go on strike and all that. So would Ghanaians be prepared to pay more? for uh, toll rate, as we are seeing in other parts of the world. We pay the lowest rate in the whole world. Meanwhile, we want good roads. Ghanaians should be prepared to pay for good roads. And it's all right. given the opportunity, uh, it will come up. It's enough. Uh, yes. Uh, Yes, um, Council, um, you've run us through the average cost per kilometer of overly asphaltic road. Minimum, yes. You mentioned 1.5 million cities. Yes. That's correct. So, an asphaltic overlay, as I understand it to be, is that which is done on an existing road. Correct. Yes. Must be on an existing road, and the base must be firm and strong. Otherwise, uh, it will. So now, give us an idea of the average cost of asphaltic concrete, asphaltic concrete, where you have to do some earthworks, fill and cut, and all that, where you have to do more culvert, uh, if it is swampy area, what should we expect? in terms of cost. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, it's always dangerous to predict or to state a certain amount as representing the cost of a kilometer of road always very dangerous. And like you said, if you want to build a concrete road, you want to know the cost of 
e, e kilometra od konkrétu. Mr. Speaker, I can't, Mr. Chairman, I can't predict that. I'm saying so because generally and as a matter of principle, it depends upon one, the scope of work, and it depends upon the technical and the ground conditions on the road. So it is your case that the Sino Hydro um, route that the Honorable Minority Chief Whip referred to is not that of an asphaltic overlay. It is a complete road. The cost arrived at was as a result of a complete assessment of the cost. Um, Edwards, etc., that will make it a complete uh, 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 concrete road, correct? Mr. Chairman, we are talking about two different things here. An overlay is a different. Wait, wait, wait for me. Yes, overlay me. is on an existing road, though. You see, Honorable Montaka related your, your minimum cost per kilometer of an overlay to that of the Sino Hydro Road to suggest that why is that it's costing so much here and there. I want you to clarify, the Sino Hydro, is it an overlay or that one is a complete road that's a new road that is to be constructed to justify why it is not the same? Sino Hydro, with the uh, exception of the uh, road they are working on on Eastern Corridor, are uh, building surface dressing roads. So they are building concrete roads. So it's different from asphalt overlay. Yes. And um, he also raised this issue of our TPP that you had to um, terminate at a point because of the code it wasn't going to benefit Ghana. But then when you had to do the tender, you did so source it. So source the same company was his Concern. Is it the case that time was of the essence to proceed so that you don't engage in further delays, having gone through the system already? No, no. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, the highest respect, it wasn't a question of timing. That is why I explained to him that, that it wasn't a question of time we were simply making and taking advantage of a competent contractor who had gone through the mill international competitive building and gone through all the processes and selected so but because we wanted to use design and build and new funding source that is all so it wasn't a question of timing and that's why I say that you know, we were using the same contractor, not with very uh, as a sole source uh, process. No. Chairman, thank you very much. Yes, yes. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Minister for Road Designate, I will take you back to your own quote. In answering the Honorable Muntaka on the Motor Angel contract, we started from TPP to sole sourcing, now to a signed contract. And these were your words, Minister. No Ghanaian contractor, no Ghanaian contractor 
has the capacity to do this work. Would you want it to be our legacy tomorrow that a Ghanaian contractor will be facilitated with your leadership as minister to have the capacity with government support to be able to execute contracts of that nature and character? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I do not want to be quoted out of context. Uh, I made a specific statement. I said that that kind of work, that kind of the manager of the work, currently no Ghanaian contractor has the capacity, the capacity to do it. I use the word capacity. I wasn't talking about uh, technical know-how. I said capacity because what you have to go through and work of that magnitude, even to get a performance bond from Ghana, uh, uh, in the bank from Ghana. Contractors themselves know that they don't have the capacity to do it. That's why we have to build the capacity. It says, it's not challenging that it says yes. we, have, we have four more years. Are you going to work to ensure yes. that yes. some Ghanaian yes. companies... That's why we have to build the capacity. Yeah. You know, that's why we continue. Thank, to, thank you, Chairman. Still, still on the same contract, in order to appreciate the numbers under PPP, 470 million, under a contract now signed with Motor Angel, 570 million Ghana cities, with an assumption that the contractor may be raising the money. Uh, Chairman, may I respectfully refer to the Public Private Partnership Act of 2020, Act 1039, which has design, build, finance, operate, and maintain, DB form. A contractual agreement which enables a private party to design, build, finance, operate, and maintain an infrastructure facility for a specified period of time after which the facility is transferred to the contracting authority. Legal ownership of the asset for the duration of the contract agreement remains with the government or contracting authority. Now, as I heard from the Honorable Muntaka, this contract was signed 16th December. The President assented to this bill with a Gazette notification of 29 December 2020. Now, I just want to understand the Tema Motorway, which extends to Apenkwa, is it conceptualized within this public-private partnership or is outside it? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it's one composite project. Chairman, I said that it's one composite project that is being considered. Okay, one composite project that will be considered under a PPP arrangement because I'm referring to the Act or outside it. Mr. Chairman, I have answered the question by saying that this project is one indivisible and composite. All right, thank you. That's noted. Uh, what's the state of the Apenia Dewenia Road? It seems to be in some poor state. Are there plans to get it done? Mr. Chairman, is on the hot burner and the front burner. Is particularly the link that goes stretches to Dodua. Will you give it some attention? Exactly, exactly. Because of the current congestion there, we need to move in very fast to relieve the, the, the people and those who drive that way. And if giving the approval is one of the immediate tasks that I am going to attend to. The government is working towards that. You were determined earlier on to fix the Bupe, Yape, Dagoya bridges. 
there is a bridge which connects between the Boya Kedua Sunsuna, which connects to Tolon. What will you do about this to ensure easy motorability for the people in that area? I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's a very uh, important uh, point to raise. Uh, we are giving those bridges and the, the uh, uh, approaches, you know, the road uh, top consideration. Because if you treat one in isolation, you don't get the benefit. For instance, if you take Bupe Yapi, you know, it's on the same stretch. And if one gets a problem, you cannot use the other traveling to Tamale or to Kumasi. And we have to build Daboya simultaneously because it provides an alternative route should any of these two bridges develop any problem. That is why we are at least Bupe Yapi that we are, we are building. So we should be assured that they will be done. Yes, because they are in competent hands, very, very competent hands. Uh, Minister, you recall what happened when they had to temporarily close the Yapi Bridge and all the traffic had to go back to the Eastern Corridor, going through Ho Ho Hoi, Damankum, Damangu, Yendi. It has some toll on trade and some toll on persons. Are we assured that? you will get the bridges fixed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We always learn from the past, we learn from history, and with that hindsight, that is why we are taking steps not only to build Bupe and Yapi, but to uh, make sure that we, we work on the Eastern Corridor Road as fast as possible, and also to build uh, uh, WR Bridge so that should there be any eventuality, may God forbid, we will use the WR Bridge through Fofoso, you know, up to Wenchi, and then we can also use the Eastern Corridor. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. Classification and licensing of road contractors. There are complaints of unnecessary delays and queues. Will you ease the process and ensure that persons desirous of becoming contractors subject to satisfying the minimum statutory question, uh, conditions are satisfied on time? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, is one area which is going to be reviewed, and it perhaps be one of my first tasks if I am approved by this uh, uh, honorable uh, committee and eventually the House, because it's creating problems for the ministry, and your classification determines what kind of work you can do. Your classification determines your efficiency, your capacity. Your classification determines your equipment level. And your classification to a very large extent will influence your workload analysis and all that. But it's not sacrosanct. You could be classified as A1, B1, which is the highest this year. By next year, depending upon your performance, you may not even qualify for B3, A3, B3. But people continue to hold A1, B1 classification they obtained 20, 15, 10 years ago, and use it to come in for certain high-level, high-profile jobs. So, Minister, when we, will can you it. So we will are going you to review ease and overhaul. Answers. Thank you. Uh, Minister, in one of your answers, you were very definite and certain, and these were your words, dualization of major routes. Then you referenced the fact that 
The President has declared 2020 year of rules, 2021 year of rules. It's one thing declaring and another thing having the financial muscle and strength to be able to deliver. Which category of rules are you contemplating that between 2021 and 2022, if approved, may be dualized? I just want certainty. Maybe Accra, Winneba, Cape Coast, Accra, Kumasi, or Kintampo, Tamale, with certainty. With major dualized rules are you looking at? Because it will also help in addressing the consequences arriving out of accidents with uh, face on uh, clashes on the roads. So can you speak to that, Minister Designate? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, as I indicated, dualization of major roads is on the top agenda of His Excellency the President and government, and it's even uh, late, but better late than never. Yes, it's going to be a major challenge, but wherever there is the way, there is always the way. We are currently working on a craft massive dualization, and in course of this year, is going to be intensified. And by the close of the year, hopefully, Ghanaians will see major, major, major work on that stretch. I indicated that President has already had a sort for the beginning of the first 17 kilometers on the Afrao Road, beyond the Central University, and it's being undertaken by a company called BHM, and they are there, and they have started their work. The uh, motorway Akosombo in Zap is also there. They are working on the dualization. For Abidjan Lagos Road, that is being undertaken under the auspices of uh, ECOWAS called ACOMA, and we are working on it, and it's a long route, and the longest stretch lies within the Kenyan corridor from Elubo to Afrao, and it's being dualized into a six-lane route, you know, and it's covering the distance. And Minister, you are convinced that, that you can so we are generate on that the well. financial resources to undertake these projects in the year of roads? I said there is determination on the part of President and the government, and we are not saying... Is that determination backed by the availability of money? Mr. Chairman, I made a statement that where there is a determination, where there is a will, there is a way. Within the first three, four years, the level of work that government has done under President Akufuado is all presented in this country. Since interchange is going on at the same time, Yes, Honorable uh, Minister, thank you. It's, it's, we are willing to do it. Because yes, yes, the yes. President is determined to do... Let's leave it here, Honorable. Chairman, I'm about concluding, as we ourselves have been advised, it's been four hours, the Minister himself has uh, been here for four hours. My Minister, I'm referring to your handed over notes, and I'm referring to Minister of Roads and Highways, Volume 1, uh, in it where you are accounting for outstanding credit facility loans. There's an Oreo Netherlands loan facility, which was meant for Sefiwiasu or Sen Chrome Road Rehabilitation Phase 2. Benchima, Benchima. Adifia, Benchima Adifia, 38 kilometers. 
in the disbursement is zero percent. What assurance are you giving the people of Safi? And the Honorable are here and quote that this will be done. You know, in your report, disbursement is zero percent. No, no, Mr. Chairman, that road, that road, that road, if my memory serves me right, is being done by, if my memory serves me right, is being done by a company called Amandi. It has the competence, the, the competence, and it's under Coco Roads. You know, uh, Coco Board, Coco Board has entered into an um, uh, agreement with them and uh, it has what it takes and I believe that so minister we would advise that you at Benchema, uh, uh, yes you give at, particular attention for this investment so that the road will take road. off yes. chairman my other one as I said will be to request for some documents from the minister and one is to refer him again to handing over notes and this one specific to the Ghana Road Fund and in it, uh, just for the record, outstanding indebtedness in Table 5.3 stands at 3,134,107.797,81 pesos and a distinction is made that Ghana Highways is 1.3 billion seven hundred and forty five million one billion three hundred and thirty four million seven hundred and forty five thousand department of federal rules stands at five hundred and eighty one million five hundred and sixty five six five six six one pesos department of urban rules one point one billion two hundred and seventeen million seven hundred and ninety six so cumulatively, 3.1 billion is outstanding in terms of road fund areas against what you are spending on the servicing of the loan with Fidelity and Commercial Bank starting from UBA. There are questions as to the criteria used in the payment. Can we have the road fund payment from 2017 to 2020 just for our purposes? Then two, as I said, Chairman, I'm ending. The Ministry undertook some audit of Coco Roads. Audit of Coco Roads. Want to know the status of it and request that the report is also submitted for our perusal. My final, Mr. Chairman, will be, is there a distinction between agricultural roads and Coco Roads, as was observed by the Honorable Eric Popoku? Is there a distinction? Where he mentioned the 560 million for agricultural roads. Are we talking about the same thing? No, 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 Mr. Chairman, no. Yeah. Chairman, Coco my, Rose, my station. Mr. Chairman, Coco Rose, we are talking about roads that essentially lead to Coco coffee growing areas. But agricultural roads will lead to any area that we have uh, uh, agricultural uh, uh, projects that will have to be uh, supported with an access road because of marketing centers. So it's specific. Uh, Chairman, there has been some perennial mudslides Accra, Kasua, Cape Coast Road, particularly when it rains. Can we have an assurance from the minister that this will be fixed? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I can confirm the, that stretch of road. We have done a lot of uh, work there. And any time it rains, the, at times the entire road is silted you know, because of the wash of the loose sand from the hill. And I think the city authorities must be up and doing, and we must come out with stiffer rules, laws, and punishment, because people win sand from the area. I have visited the area three times, three to four times. We have done a lot of work there. We have created deep drainage there, but it's not able to resolve 
the matter because of the sand uh, being, uh, being there. The solution that my ministry offered was to grass the entire slope. Once it's well grassed, then it will hold the loose uh, uh, sand, loose soil, and then to thank, come thank back you, Chama, and Chama, so But because of the winning of the sand, we are not able to do it. Thank you, Chama, and I should be ending here wishing the nominee well. But to note that, Chairman, when the road fund levy was enhanced from 50 pesos to 1 pesos, I was in cabinet then, and the understanding was that part of it was to be used to be dedicated for new projects, and part used to service or retire debt. So we are talking of 3.1 billion debt today. How much of it should we expect it to be retired from the road fund? And I'm advising that we should dedicate a certain amount to clear the debt, because that is what is softly killing the contractors, whilst a certain portion is dedicated for new projects. On that note, I wish you well. Jerry, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. We told ourselves that we would be finished in two hours. Now we have done four hours practically and this is from your big base in the Chantilly in Kumasi they say they want your assurance just assurance that you do the Swami interchange you do the Amraga interchange and you do Abakwa interchange can you give them the assurance son of the minister is that, is that German Mr. Chairman, the assurance is hereby given and that we are going to work on those three interchanges in Kumasi and I want to repeat them. So I'm the interchange, Ahujo interchange and Ofurikum interchange. We are going to concentrate on these three interchanges and I give them every... Uh, in addition to this three or um, across Swami, which is a heavy traffic area, Angoga, major interchange area, and Ebuakwa. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, in I addition mean, to that, that you're promising. I find, uh, my memory, uh, Angoga is the same as Kofuriku. Yes. Yes. It's the same as Kofuriku, yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Very well. Is Ebuakwa Park going to Sunyani? Yes. Around the, the Nigeria University. The proper one is going on. Very well. Thank you. Thank you for enduring us. Oh, for oh uh, the Honorable Majority Leader wants me to ask you. He, Kamaliman, wants me to ask whether you do the Kumase uh, inner city and interior roads. Yes, yes. It's, 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 the chairman is, is also under consideration. Thank you for um, attending upon the committee. You will uh, hear from us. Uh, you are discharged. Thank you. You are discharged. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to you. She's my friend, right? Arab members, um, we are advised to stretch. So, we will resume quarter to four. Fifteen minutes or so break to stretch your legs.